I'm patching up a little hole. It happens. No one can tell. And besides, if anyone actually ever said anything about the fluting of your pie, the crimping of your pie, don't give them a slice. It's just gorgeous. That's all they should say. <laughs> Hi, I'm Melissa Clark from NYT Cooking, and I am making the three iconic Thanksgiving pies. There's the apple pie, the pecan pie, and today, the pumpkin pie, which, by the way, is actually better when it's made with butternut squash. Okay, hear me out. So the stuff in the can, you know, the solid pack pumpkin, is a variety of pumpkin that is extremely like butternut squash. Looks similar, has very similar flesh. When it comes to the difference between squashes and pumpkins, they're actually very closely related botanically. So when I started making my homemade version, I found that butternut squash is actually the best variety. It's the sweetest and it's also the easiest to deal with. The next question is, what's the best way to cook it? You could steam it, you could saute it, or you could roast it. I am in favor of roasting, and not just roasting, but I like to cube the squash before I roast it, and that way I also get evaporation and a little bit of caramelization. All of those things make a superior puree to a steamed squash. Another thing to take note of, do you know that can of evaporated milk that many recipes call for? Don't use it. Evaporated milk is a wartime convenience. Um, it's shelf stable. but. It actually doesn't taste that good. You know what's better? Heavy cream. It's richer, it's just got a fresh flavor, and it is exactly what I wanna use for my pie. If you're worried about missing roasting the pumpkin seeds because you're not using one of those big jack-o'-lantern pumpkins, did you know you can roast squash seeds exactly like pumpkin seeds and they are just as good? If you've seen any of the other pie videos we did, this is gonna look familiar because I'm gonna roll out some pie dough again. You can use any kind of pie dough that you like, your favorite recipe. I really like an all butter pie dough. If you like a little shortening, that's fine. Actually, you know what's really good with pumpkin pie? Graham cracker crust too. So that's an option for you. So many pie options. If hitting your pie dough with a rolling pin stresses you out, you could just take the dough out of the fridge five minutes or 10 minutes before you wanna roll it out. That works too but I kind of like. Another trick is to keep the dough moving around the counter so that it doesn't stick. Do not worry about ragged edges because you're gonna trim them off later. And then you just wanna roll it out a little bigger than your pie dish, like two inches, and that is perfect. You just wanna adjust it so that it's an even amount of overhang. And now I'm just gonna trim it so that it's about an inch over the rim of the pie dish. For the edge of the pie dough. I am doing a really simple crimp, so I'm just folding the edge of the dough in and then using my fingers to flute it like that. I am going to um, put this in the freezer and let it get really, really cold. You can do this 30 minutes ahead of baking or even a day or two ahead. To make this pie, you're gonna need two pounds of butternut squash. So it's two pounds of squash before you peel it and take out the seeds. If you're buying like a little container of squash that's already cut up, you need one and a quarter pounds. I'm gonna think this is two pounds. I'm gonna say it's two pounds. <sighs> two pounds, two ounces. All right, so I'm gonna use this vegetable peeler. This is the easiest way to peel a butternut squash. You just slip off the peel. I swear I just did this and it was totally easy and fine. What's going on, peeler? I, I just did it. Let's try this guy. Okay, let's pretend that never happened. I swear, oh there, all right, not too bad. And now you're just gonna cut this into um, chunks of squash. You can save the seeds and you can roast them up just like pumpkin seeds. I have a really good tip for when you roast pumpkin seeds. If you let it dry out overnight and then roast it the next day, the seeds are actually crunchier because they, you know, they dry out a little bit and it's easier to remove all of this stuff. And then when you're cutting the squash into cubes, you really don't have to worry about them being even or looking pretty because in the end, it all just gets pureed. You just want them to roast you know, somewhat evenly. Now I'm going to drizzle the squash with a little bit of heavy cream, and this just helps it caramelize a little bit. And then two tablespoons of sugar. And just toss it a little bit. And then finally, you're gonna dot the top with butter. 
and I'm going to um, roast this at 400 for about 40 to 50 minutes until it's very tender and just a little bit brown. I am also going to preheat a sheet pan and this is gonna be where my pie lands when it's all filled and ready to bake. The squash is thoroughly roasted. You can see it's super tender, very soft, which is what you want. You want it to cool before you add the eggs so the eggs don't cook. This is just a good way to cook squash. It'd be a great Thanksgiving side dish, just saying. This pie you do not need to be precise with because the egg set it up, you've got the structure, and really you can just have fun with the flame rings. Salt. And you can use bourbon, you could use dark rum is really good, um, brandy or vanilla extract. Just scrape it down because there's stuff stuck on the sides. Give it one more little pulse and that's it. And that's done. It's really easy. You know, once you've got the squash cubes, it goes super quickly. And if you wanted to substitute canned pumpkin, you absolutely can. It's one and a half cups of canned pumpkin, which annoyingly is a little less than the one and three quarters cup can. Sorry, but that's just how it worked out. Um, save that extra half a cup of pumpkin puree and um, add it to your oatmeal. Pumpkin pie was my dad's favorite at Thanksgiving, and every year he would always say, this is good, but it could use more ginger. He was crazy about ginger. So for him, I would always grate fresh ginger root and put it into the filling. Um, so if you have someone in your life who is crazy about ginger, I would highly recommend one teaspoon of finely grated ginger root right in here and leave everything else the same. Okay, you wanna um, just hit it against the counter if you like to get rid of air bubbles. And then it's gonna flatten and melt into just a perfectly smooth, shiny surface when it's in the oven. Pie is now thoroughly cooled. You need to let it cool for at least a couple of hours. Whatever you do, don't put it in the fridge. The fridge is the enemy of a crunchy, crispy crust. It's gonna make it soggy. So even if you make it the day before, it's okay to leave it out overnight. Pumpkin pie, when I was growing up, I would say in my ranking, my personal ranking, it's number two. It's just a little bit below pecan. They're, they're kind of neck and neck, but pecan has the edge because I really like the crunch. But a pumpkin pie that's just, you know, really dense and super creamy, lightly spiced with a great pumpkin flavor, that's what I'm looking for. Now is that time during every video where I get to eat the pie. <laughs> it's the best part of the video. It's so good. Is it better than pecan pie? Mm. I mean, maybe my favorite pie is just the pie that's on my plate right now. Of course, when it's Thanksgiving, that's the thing about Thanksgiving, you don't have to choose. If you've got three pies on the table, then you get three slices right on your plate.